In the year 1846, St. Nectaris was born to a pious family in a small Greek village. His grandmother gave him a cross, which contained a piece of the true cross that Christ was crucified on. The saint always wore it around his neck, and this cross became his most prized possession. As St. Nectaris grew older, his love for Christ also grew. St. Nectaris greatly desired to go to school, but his family was too poor to send him to one. When he was 14 years old, it was decided that he would go to Constantinople in order to find work, help his family financially, and go to school. Since he had to take a boat to get there, he went to the dock and asked the boat's captain if he could come with them to Constantinople. But the captain refused to take him on board because St. Nectaris didn't have enough money to pay the fare. Then the captain ordered that the engines be started for departure, but the boat wouldn't budge. No matter what the captain did, the boat would not move. The captain finally decided to take the young boy on board. As soon as the saint came onto the boat, the boat began to move smoothly and easily. Later, a similar wonder occurred. On this occasion, the ship was in a great storm and was in danger of sinking. As St. Nectaris cried out to God for help, he remembered the cross around his neck, which contained a piece of the true cross. He took off his cross, tied it to his belt, and dipped it into the sea three times. He cried out, Silence! Be still! At once, the storm stopped, and all those aboard were miraculously saved. But St. Nectaris' cross had fallen into the sea. The saint was very sad that he had lost his most prized possession. As the boat sailed on, sounds of knocking seemed to come from the hull of the boat. When the ship docked, the saint got off and started to walk away. Suddenly, the captain began shouting for him to come back. The captain had ordered some men into a small boat to try to figure out what was causing the knocking. They discovered the cross stuck to the hull. Saint Nectaris was elated to receive his treasure and always wore it around his neck. From that time forward. Upon arriving to Constantinople, St. Nectaris was awestruck by the beauty of the buildings and ancient Christian churches. The saint found a job working for a merchant at a tobacco company. This was during a time when people didn't know that tobacco was very bad for your health. He started working early in the morning and finished his work very late at night. He read as much as he could of the holy scriptures, the writings of the holy fathers, and made a collection of wise sayings which he wrote on the papers that he used to wrap his customer's goods, since he didn't have enough money to buy paper. Even at a young age, St. Nectaris desired to teach and share the word of God. He thought that the customers would be spiritually enriched by the wise sayings, as he had been. St. Nectaris was very happy to have a job, but he had to work long hours for a very small wage. He didn't even make enough money to buy clothing or shoes. The saint would run errands for his master wearing old shoes full of holes and old clothes that were falling apart. The winters in Constantinople seemed particularly cold that year. The saint's feet were red and numb as he ran through the icy streets, and the wind angrily bit at his nails and cheeks. He didn't know what to do. He didn't have any money to spare on shoes or clothes, so he decided to write a letter to someone he knew could definitely help. He got a pen and some paper and started writing his letter. After he finished writing the letter, St. Nectarius wrote on the outside of the envelope, To the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. On his way to the post office, he ran into the owner of a nearby shop. The merchant was a very kind man who knew St. Nectarius. The man admired the saint for his innocence, honesty, and hard work. The merchant was also heading towards the post office and offered to send the letter. St. Nectarius thanked him and ran off to return to work. The merchant arrived to the post office and was about to mail the letter when he noticed who it was addressed to. He was very surprised, and his curiosity about the contents of the letter grew. He decided to put it in his pocket and took it home. There, he opened it reverently and read, My dear Christ, you know very well that I love you very much. Could you please send me one pair of shoes? Thank you so much. The merchant's eyes were filled with tears, and his heart was filled with sympathy for the saint. The merchant decided to answer the letter himself. In the morning, he sent by post what the boy had asked Christ for. Saint Nectaris opened the package and found a shiny new pair of shoes and some warm new clothes. The saint was so happy and thanked God for answering his prayer so quickly. 
But when his boss saw St. Nectarius in his new clothes and shoes, he was very confused. He knew that the saint couldn't afford to buy such nice things because he paid him next to nothing, and assumed that the saint stole them. The angry man went up to St. Nectarius and started to yell and beat the saint. St. Nectarius tried to defend himself. I've never stolen anything in my life. Don't, don't hit me. My little Christ sent them to me. The kind merchant who had sent the shoes and clothes heard all of the noise across the street. Alarmed, he went over to investigate. He was shocked at what was taking place and took St. Nectarius' angry boss to the side and explained to him that the saint was no thief and that he had given him the shoes and clothes. Soon after this, Christ answered one of St. Nectarius' other prayers of being able to go to school. St. Nectarius was able to find a new job, which allowed him to continue his studies. At the age of 20, he moved to the breathtakingly beautiful island of Chios, where he taught at an Orthodox school in one of the villages. During these years, he began to develop a strong love for the monastic life. He decided to enter a monastery, was tonsured a monk, and was soon after ordained a deacon. St. Nectarius was able to enter the School of Theology in Athens. He was an excellent student, a brilliant writer, and started writing spiritual books and pamphlets. After he completed his studies, St. Nectarius was sent to Alexandria in Egypt. There, he was ordained a priest. The people of Alexandria loved their new priest. They were impressed by his virtues of humility, meekness, simplicity, and compassion. Only three years later, St. Nectarius was made the Metropolitan of Pentapolis. He felt unworthy of this honor, but began with even greater zeal to serve the church and the spiritual needs of the people. But some of the local clergy started to become extremely jealous of St. Nectarius's quick rise to power and popularity among the people. They started to spread lies about the saint. They claimed that all he wanted was more power and that he secretly led a very unholy life. Unfortunately, the Patriarch believed this slander and dismissed St. Nectarius from his position in Alexandria. This brought much grief to the Holy Nectarius, since now he couldn't serve the Church and the people whom he loved. In order not to cause the people any distress, the Saint departed humbly and quietly and returned to Greece. He was a bishop without a throne. Several of his friends who didn't betray him recommended that he should try to help the Orthodox in Greece, who were suffering spiritually from the increasing influence of secular ideas. But the slander against St. Nectarius had reached Greece also, and to his deep sadness, he was not allowed to preach or work anywhere. This brought great sorrow to the tender heart of the saint. Through all of these difficulties, the saint remained patient, increased his prayers, and trusted that God would direct his path. Once again, St. Nectarios found himself with no means of income. He patiently continued in prayer and pursued his former activity of writing spiritual books and pamphlets for the instruction of Orthodox Christians. Finally, he was given a position as a preacher on a large island just north of Athens. This was a lowly position for someone who was a bishop, but St. Nectarios didn't think of it as lowly. He was joyful that he again had an opportunity to speak to the people and share his love for God. But in his new position, he continued to experience hardships. During his sermons, the people who were present believed the rumors. They mocked and ridiculed him while he was trying to preach. Even though this was very difficult for St. Nectarius to endure, like he had done in his youth, he forgave and blessed his enemies. However, several prominent Greeks from Egypt visited Athens and testified that the saint was innocent. After this, the people who attended St. Nectarius' church marveled at the saint's humility. That Sunday, the church was crowded. St. Nectarius gave a sermon that was full of wisdom, love, and true orthodox piety. After his sermon was finished, instead of mocking him, the people cheered. This encouraged the saint, and he continued to preach at churches and schools. He was later appointed the director of the Rosario School in Athens. In this school, Young men studied religion and many later became clergy of the church. But before St. Nectarius came, the school had become somewhat disorderly, corrupt and heavily influenced by secularism. But the saint was able to restore order at the school. The students came to love the saint as a loving father, as well as a shining example of true virtue. 
St. Nectarius would preach at the school chapel, but his sermons became so popular that tickets had to be issued to enter the chapel. On one occasion, some of the students got into an argument which ended in a fistfight. The four culprits were taken to St. Nectarius' office. Each boy gave his side of the story and blamed the other boys for causing the fight. Finally, St. Nectarius told them that the only thing he could do was to punish himself. He said that he was going to go on a hunger strike for three days and that he would fast and pray about the matter. The boys were shocked and speechless. St. Nectarius told the boys that they sat in him because they were the priests of the future. He told them to go and forgive each other. And if they didn't do this, he would have to punish himself for a longer time. The boys were moved to tears. Their hearts softened and they forgave each other. Years later, all of the boys went on to become very good priests of Christ's Holy Church. St. Nectarius gave alms generously to those in need often giving away his last coin. Even though St. Nectarius was a bishop, he would wear old, tattered robes. If St. Nectarius had a new robe, he would give it away and wear his old one. School officials would rebuke him for wearing his old robes, but this didn't stop St. Nectarius from continuing to give his money and belongings to the poor. Once the janitor of the school became very ill and couldn't come to work, St. Nectarius knew that the janitor needed this job, and if he lost it, he wouldn't be able to provide for his family, so the saint secretly did the janitor's work at night. This included scrubbing the dirty toilets and filthy floors throughout the school. He made the school look so clean that no one suspected the janitor wasn't coming to work. In this way, St. Nectarius kept the job for the sick man until he was well enough to return to work. After many years of serving Christ at the school, St. Nectarius retired and helped establish the Holy Trinity Convent on the island of Aina. He served there as the confessor and spiritual father to the nuns. Sometimes during prayer, he was seen lifted up above the ground. By his prayers, he brought rain when it was needed, healed the sick, and cast out demons. St. Nectarius continued writing books and poetry on the island. His writings became very well known throughout Greece and were like spiritual honey for those who were starving for the truth. St. Nectarius had a special veneration for the Theotokos. One night, he saw the Theotokos in a vision. She gave him a poem, O Virgin Pure. This beautiful poem was later put to music and is now enjoyed by thousands of people around the world. Although many people love the saint, not everyone on the island was happy with him. The mother of a young girl who had entered the monastery accused the saint of mistreating her daughter. The Metropolitan of Greece believed the false accusations and went to Ayuna to discipline St. Nectarios. He yelled at the saint for an hour. The Metropolitan thought that the saint had been taking advantage of and was cruelly mistreating the nuns. He told the saint that he should be disgusted with himself and that he had brought shame to the title of bishop. The police were sent to the convent to investigate. They took the woman's daughter for medical examination but found that everything was completely normal. They also discovered through interviews and investigation that the other nuns were not being mistreated at all and that all of the accusations were false. The saint's innocence was proven once again. Saint Nectarius was now growing older and suffered from prostate cancer. He endured severe pain while lying in a hospital ward for the poor. In the fall of 1920, Saint Nectarius fell asleep in the Lord at the age of 74. At the moment of his repose, the entire hospital was filled with a beautiful divine fragrance. A man who had been paralyzed for many years was lying on a bed next to the saint. The nuns wanted to dress Saint Nectarius in fresh attire before taking him to be buried, but they happened to lay an article of Saint Nectarius's clothing on the feet of the paralyzed man in the next bed. Immediately after this, the man got up on his own. Through St. Nectarius' intercessions, he was healed. The relics of St. Nectarius were returned to the Holy Trinity Convent on Aina, where they remain to this day. Thousands of pilgrims journey to Aina every year to venerate his holy relics, and many miracles have occurred through his intercessions. Pilgrims can even hear the knocking of St. Nectarius' death 
coming from his tomb. He has even appeared to some, and many have been healed of incurable diseases like cancer. Saint Nectarius is also the patron saint of those who are wrongly accused and those who struggle through many hardships. Saint Nectarius endured a great deal of suffering throughout his life. The saint once said, Give yourself with trust into God's hands and ask his help so that he will strengthen you in your struggle. God knows how much each one can bear and allows temptations according to the measure of our strength. Remember that after temptation comes spiritual joy and that the Lord protects them that endure temptations and suffering for the sake of his love. St. Nectarius has become one of the most beloved saints of our time. Holy St. Nectarius, pray to Christ for us.